So this is the five contemplations in 2013, uh, January 13. We are in the calm still water meditation hall in the winter retreat of 2012 and 2013. This year, um, every morning, we uh, read the sentence that say, please practice walking meditations diligently. Every time we walk, we don't think or we don't talk. And the practice of not talking while we're walking, um, we have been doing that for a while. When we walk, talk and walk at the same time, how can we pay attention to our steps and our breath? So it's for sure that we walk without talking, but what about walking without thinking? If we think, then how can we have a chance to pay attention to our steps or our breath? Because our thinking takes us away from the present moment. So this year, let's pay attention to this aspect. It's not that we haven't practiced this uh, in previous years. And then this year we say directly that when you uh, do walking meditations, you cannot think. Or you're not allowed to think. We know that in, um, in Soto Zen tradition, they say that the secret of meditation is to not think. No thinking. It's not that you are banned from thinking or prohibited from thinking, but most of the time our thinking is not right thinking. It's the kind of thinking that are circular and doesn't take us anywhere. If we practice right thinking, then that's okay. But here, this is not right thinking. And, and we get pulled away by this flow of thoughts. So we don't pay attention to our breathing or our steps. So remind each other that when you walk, do not think. This is very important. When we walk, just pay attention to our steps, our breath, so we have the chance to be in touch with the miracles of life in this body and in all around us, so we can be healed and be nourished. Each step nourishes us, each step heals us, and each step is a miracle. Each step is freedom. So the miracle comes from, that word comes from Master Linchi. He said, if you walk with mindfulness on this planet, that is a miracle already. To know that I'm alive here with two strong legs and walking slowly each step in freedom on this planet, that is a miracle. The miracle of walking on earth. So each step nourishes us, each step heals us, and each step is a miracle, and each step is liberation, it's freedom, not being attached. And if our steps have these four qualities of nourishment, healing, miracle, and freedom, each step can bring us a lot of happiness. So when we look at someone walking in the upper hamlet or lower hamlet or new hamlet, we, we can know that this person 
is having is happy or not or have freedom or not we don't need to be an awakened person just just as a normal person we can see that whether this person is paying attention to her steps or her breath or is having joy and peace and happiness while this person's walking we can recognize it very easily when um, in the temple ground we see someone walking in mindfulness and in freedom in peace then that is a bell of mindfulness to remind us that we can walk like that too so the presence of such a person who knows how to walk is very beneficial to the Sangha. We walk as a free person. We walk as a Bodhisattva or a Buddha. For example, if we see someone who doesn't walk like that, someone who doesn't walk in freedom, who does not have happiness and joy while they walk, that is also about mindfulness for us. We say that. I should walk in a different way from this. I have, to, I should walk with mindfulness and have happiness in my steps, so I can contribute to the quality of happiness and peace and joy for the sangha. So we see someone who walk with rush, rushing energy and without mindfulness. That is about mindfulness for us too. And if we're able to walk in mindfulness, then everyone else can walk like that. And that person, in a few days, will change their way of walking too, and walk in happiness and freedom. Maybe at first when she arrived, she could not walk like that. And the second day, she's not able to walk like that yet. But in the third day, she sees that uh, the monastics and the lay friends are walking like this. Then she, it wakes her up to say that, oh, I'm here to practice walking in freedom, to walk in happiness. And see, change is because of us. So when we walk as a group, as a collective, and each person has peace, happiness, and mindfulness, we create this energy, the group energy of mindfulness, of uh, insight and concentration and of peace and joy and this energy will nourish all of us when 5,000 or 100 uh, or 1,000 people uh, walk like this then this energy of peace is very strong and can nourish so many people and can heal so many people so when we are walking we stop our talking and we stop our thinking so we can pay attention to our steps and our breath. We coordinate our steps and our breathings so that our steps have this quality of nourishment. We're being nourished by the miracles of life that are present within ourselves and around us, such as the fresh air or the the grass around us or something's beautiful and when we are nourished we are healed the healing happens when we are relaxed when we can let go and we do we're not tense and we can be in touch with the miracles of life those miracles will it get absorbed into our body and absorb into our soul and, and that will heal us. Some people, they only need to do walking meditation and they can heal the disease. And each step can help us to be in touch with the miracles of life so we can be nourished and be healed and so that we can generate joy and happiness right in the steps. Peace is every step, joy is every step, healing is every step, nourishment is in every step. So that's the practice of walking meditation in Plum Village. And when we walk like this, we come back to our city 
and we walk like this, we bring Plum Village home. We bring Plum Village to everywhere that we go. This is talking about walking meditation. And now we're talking about eating meditation. It's the same. So this year we talk a little bit about eating. Before eating, we read the five contemplations that remember, remember when in lay life, we eat, we turn off the TV, but in, in the monastery, we think, turn off our non-stop thinking radio. When we eat with uh, so much thoughts, we're eating our thoughts. And usually our thoughts are just um, not the right thing, right thinking or wrong thinking. We think about all kinds of things. So this, this the term tang tam tap thai. It means like our mind, our thoughts are all over the place, and tap thai is just a talking about nonsense um, things. So our five contemplations, compared to the traditional contemplation, we have some improvements. This is the five contemplations before meals and why eating we have some improvements so the dining dining hall in the temple usually has the name of the far the hall of five contemplations the place where we practice the five contemplations But usually in the tradition, we often see that before we a meal, we just read the contemplation about one minute. And then while we're eating, we might forget about the five contemplations. And our mind get um, scattered everywhere. And, and when we talk, it's all quiet. Even if we don't talk outside, we have the mental talk inside. The mental discourse inside the conversations within in in the mind so the five contemplations in the tradition is like this Ke kong da thiu. Lai Su Ke Kong Da Thiu It means <coughs> Let's look again of these the the work that goes into this food how much how much work there is that go into this food In our contemplations we say that this food is a gift from the earth and sky and from the hard work of many people and much hard and loving work so it's not that it's um, according to tradition but there's also the beauty in this phrase this is the gift of the earth and sky and the, the work hard and loving work it's not just how much work there is it means where does this food come from It means it comes from the earth and the sky. It's a gift of the earth and the sky. From the mother earth and from the father son. And the second phrase is To te duk duk han. To ke i, to ke i, duk han. Toàn quý ứng cúng Toàn quý ứng cúng It's been 40 years that I practice in according to the new five contemplations so I don't practice this old way anymore but I still remember them 
Thống kỵ đức hạnh means to look and measure how much of my virtue, my merit, how much of it is worthy of receiving. Ứng cúng is receiving this worthy of receiving this food. In the five contemplations, the new ones has similar meaning, but it's a bit more flowery. Please eat in mindfulness to be worthy of receiving this food. The third The third phrase is The third one is what is it called? Phòm tâm something? Phòm tâm ly quá Tham đẳng ly tu Phòm tâm Keeping my heart so that it doesn't uh, fall into faults, into bad habits. Where means these mistakes and these bad habits. So to keep my mind, my heart, to be far away from mistakes. And the first mistake is to be greedy, um, to have too many desires. The mental formation especially our greed. So this is very clear about being greedy, wanting to eat too much food. But in Vietnamese, it sounds a bit more uh, uh, more flowery. Please look at our bad mental formations, especially the not eating too much. So to be direct is, is to say, do not overeat. Do not be too greedy with food. The fourth one Chính sự lương dịch Vị liệu Hiền Hình khô So this means why are you eating? You have to see your food as medicine That it has its uh, quality to help us, our body to not be dry up um, and wilt. So the food is kind of like a medicine. So I feel a little bit bad that eating is almost like drinking um, bitter medicine. So while you eat, you might not think that your food tastes good. So I think that the Buddha, when the king um, uh, Pasadani or Bimbisara give him some, donate some nice food, delicious food so he did praise the good food of those kings so we know that he knows the food tastes good he he eats in mindfulness so he knows that it it tastes good it's not that i'm drinking bitter medicines to to heal my illness so uh, it means that our food is to help cure our body of its um, it being dried up and not having energy. So we go a little bit further on this, that we know uh, and we appreciate the, the value of our food. The only things that do not be too greedy about food. We know if the food tastes good, then we know it tastes good. Or tastes bad, we, we know it tastes bad. But we don't say that it tastes bad. I went to the southern tradition. Uh, I know that the the monks in this tradition, while they eat, they cannot praise or criticize the food. They they know that how it tastes inside, but they do not say it outward. One time, I was uh, with Ajahn Sulak, and uh, we eat um, mango with him. And I said, "Oh wow, this tastes so good." And all the uh, Thailand monastics, they do not say that. They just keep it inside. But I say it. 
I told them directly. This one is movie. Than đạo nghiệp. Vị thành đạo nghiệp. It's because I want to complete my aspirations of the practice and to help others. This is why I receive the food today. So this is in the traditions. There are many of us who, in the Plum Village, use the French and Vietnamese version, so we don't know this Sino-Vietnamese version. So this is uh, a chance for you to know what they sounds like. They have four words, four words each. It's very easy to remember. And before that, there is an opening verse. Phật chế thì kêu Phật tụ quán. Phật chế tỳ kheo Thực tồn Ngũ quán Tán tâm Tập thoại Tập thoại Tính thí nem liêu Đại chúng văn khánh thanh Các chánh niệm So this is in, uh, in tradition The phrase currently in Hue they still read this phrase and in China they still read like this too uh, the Buddha has created this the methods that a monastic while they are eating they have to maintain the five contemplations The truth is, when we read the five contemplation, we just eat and we don't contemplate anymore. So we need to find ways that during the whole meals, we have still contemplate on the five. So this is the issue here. Not just to read the five contemplation and, and then just eat and forget about the contemplation. It's the same here in Plum Village. Um, after reading, then we uh, we just let go of the five contemplation and we eat and we still think and we still um, have these mental discourse um, and scatter our mind. Tang tam is to scatter our mind. That thai is to to have a uh, nonsense this nonsensical discourse, even though we don't say. We think about this person, about that person, we feel sad, we feel bored. So this is the mental conversations inside. So it means that the, the things that people come to donate, uh, the food that they come and donate to us, but it can cause their heart, it's hard for us to digest. So before a meal then um, the the precept master read the sen sentence đại chúng văn khánh thanh các chánh niệm so it say sangha when please when you hear the the, ba the bell please have uh, please contemplate in mindfulness 
and read these five contemplations, whether out loud or in, inside you. So let's try it out with the bell. So please um, have your hands in the lotus positions and here. Phật kế tỳ kheo thức tồn ngũ quang Tăng tâm tạp thoại tín thi nan tiêu Đại chúng văn khăn thần các chân niệm Nam mô a di đà Phật <cười> Vậy đó um, there are many of the monastics here knows this tradition from back then, but it's still going on in Hue in Vietnam. We go a bit further. We say that let's please eat in mindfulness in a way that we can lessen the suffering of all beings on earth. That is because we have learned from the sutra um, on the, the four kinds of nutrients. We eat in a way that we can still keep our compassion alive. May we meet, we, may we keep our compassion alive by eating in a way that we reduce the suffering of living beings, preserve our planet, and reverse the process of global warming. We eat in a way that we can reduce the suffering of all beings on earth and we can protect this earth and we can reverse this global warming. This is this is a improvement steps because of our desire to build the Sangha and nourish the brotherhood and sisterhood. This is why I receive this food. So all the beauty of the old c contemplations, we still keep that, but we also have many beautiful things in the new contemplations. Instead of we open the verse like this, so we have a different kind of opening. The Buddha and the Sangha invite us to eat the meal in mindfulness. Please only pay attention to the food and the Sangha and do not let your mind dwell and scatter on the things in the past, the future, and the present. And eat in a way that we have peace and freedom and brotherhood and sisterhood while we eat. And when you hear the bell, Please practice um, the contemplations. So we uh, we are proposing that when we eat, it's in a way that we have freedom and and ease, and so that we can have this brotherhood and sisterhood, and to have happiness while we eat. To in order to have that, we need to stop our talking and stop our thinking. So in this winter retreat this year, we added this, uh, that when we eat, let's stop, let's stop our, our radio, the non-stop thinking radio while we eat. In Plum Village, we are taught very clearly that when we eat, we only focus on two things. The first is the food and the seconds are the people who are eating with, with us. When we pick a piece of carrot up, we see the carrot or the tofu for a second. And we see that that piece of food is a gift of the earth and the sky, that there's the wind and there's the sunlight and, and the whole cosmos comes to create this piece of carrot for us to eat. And we don't need any time more than one second or two seconds to see this. This is the insight. A little bit of concentration, a little bit of mindfulness, then we have insight. And we can see that 
picking this food up, we see that this is a work, the work, the coming together of the whole cosmo. This is the true nature of this piece of carrot, is the ambassador of this cosmo. And when we eat like this, we have happiness. We put it in our mouth and we are in contact with the cosmo instead of just being in touch with only the scattered thinking and the food and the sadness and and the worries inside us so being in touch like this is very powerful if we have mindfulness even in one little piece of rice of rice or peanut we are in touch with the whole cosmo we know that the rice plants and the peanut plants they grow up and they receive their nourishments from the soil. And the nourishments are made from so many things. The many beings that die and, and um, deteriorate and become these organic materials. Maybe in this uh, piece of rice or, or peanut, it might even have the bones of our ancestor. Grandma, grandma, and so many generations have died their body have deteriorate. The topsoil is made from all these organic materials in which there are the deteriorate forms and bones and flesh of many beings. It can be from the leaves, from the bugs and caterpillars, earthworms, and of humans, of grasshoppers, and maybe in our previous lifetime we have sat here and we have died here and our bones have deteriorate here and we eat this piece of rice is us that eating our own flesh and our bones this is the insight and when we eat like this we have a lot of insight while we eat we eat not to not to become a monastic but eating is the practice Eating is not to have the energy and the health to become a monastic, but eating is the practice. This is the five contemplations. And when we have gratitude and we see deeply like this, we can see that our food is very healing, very nourishment, nourishing. We eat with our compassion. If we eat with our compassion, then it's almost like we're eating the flesh of our own children just like the sutra has taught us. In the four kinds of nutri nutrients sutra. So when we eat, we stop our thinking so we can pay attention to our food. A piece of carrot, a piece of tofu, a peanut, or a spoon of rice. These are all the topics of our contemplation. These are all the topics to focus on. If we keep thinking and scatter our mind, we cannot do this. And the second object of contemplation is our Sangha. We see that our brother and our sisters and our friends are eating together with me. Be we have this that we have this happens because of our blessing. We have our spiritual family. If we do not see and look at the beautiful presence of our brother and sister, it would be a waste to not see this because one day each person can walk on a different separate path. Maybe one day I will die or our brothers go to the US or our sister goes to Thailand and no one would sit here in the same table. So when we sit together, we pay attention to our food and the people who are sitting here with us. And it gives rise to the gratitude within that this person is still alive, still present and sitting here with me. So when we eat like this, we will have a lot of happiness.
uh, those those who take care of the Plum Village Dictionary, please add in the entry, the NST, the Non-Stop Thinking Radio. When we think, while we walk or think while we eat, that is a kind of food too. We know that there are four types of nutrients. The so first is edible foods or drank thật. Doang thực, edible food. Ahara is food. Doang thực is the food that comes through our mouth to the oral path. But there's another kind of food which is called suk thực. So this is something that we digest every day. We eat with our ma our eyes, our ears, our nose, and our skin, and our thoughts, because they are fine. There are six kinds. There are six sense organs: the eyes, nose, ears, tongues, and taste, touch, um, and our thinking. And we eat through these six organs. When we watch the TV. Then we eating through the sense, the sense, um, the food from the senses, because or uh, the the food from the news or the TV. These are the kind of foods too. Or these books, the TV or novel, it can contain toxins. And if we watch these programs or listen to these programs or listen to these programs. We bring poison, poisons inside. So these food that are from sense contact can be dangerous. So the, on the internet can be a sense, is a source of food, and then can be many kind of poisons. And our kids might be on the internet, and they might be in touch with these very uh, poisonous food. So we need to have mindfulness to discern which is a source of healthy food and which food is um, brings poisons. We go to the bookstores and we buy books that can help our minds become more calm and at peace and happy and not water the seeds of cravings and violence within us. And the same when we watch TV. We watch program that doesn't have a lot of um, hatreds and cravings and greed and these are all the source of um, the food from sense contact and the third one is a volitional food tư niệm thật volition satana these are our planning our wanting our desires our vows, our ideals. We live on this life. What what do we want? What is it for? Each of us, we have our own individual dreams and wish and hopes and ideals. And our hope, our dreams, our wish it can be very healthy, but it can also be very poisonous. For example, uh, the, the thieves or the robbers, they want to be rich, but rich by um, burning villages, by pillaging, by robbing, and they do not create their own material wealth but they see that other people have a lot of wealth and they come and rob and bring home. So that wanting to be rich in that way is a kind of aspiration that is not healthy. There are people who want to be teachers. They want to be a good teachers in order to bring a new generation up. And that is a kind of 
uh, volition of food that is very healthy so that children um, each day can receive something that's healthy and uh, with compassion and warmth so that these kids can have happiness. So we want a kind of education that that can help them transform the fear and violence uh, within the children. And if we have this aspiration, then that is a kind of good volitional food. Or if we want to protect the environment, protect the earth, we want to spend our time and energy to help um, lessen the pollution. And we want to use our life energy to do this, then that is a good aspiration. But if our aspiration is to have a lot of money or have a lot of fame and riches or have a lot of sex, then that is not a, a healthy uh, aspiration because there are those who run after money, sex, fame and riches and they destroy their whole body and mind. And that is a very toxic kind of aspiration. And we have learned a lot about these three types of food. So now I want to talk a bit more about the fourth kind, the food of consciousness. And thuk thuk, very few people who understand this. And some monastics, they explain this in a wrong way. They think that um, consciousness food is mean the food for the consciousness. They say that they say that the f faint the the food from the forms um, nama rupa. So these are the things that will give rise, the feed the consciousness, such as when we uh, die and we get uh, our consciousness get reborn. So it will find a new form of a baby and get attached to and then that fetus grows up and they say that's the kind of consciousness for food and that's incorrect. This food is not, this is not edible food. It's outside. It's outside of the five sense organs. But it's a conscious. It's the collective consciousness and the individual consciousness. The collective consciousness it can be very toxic and our individual consciousness can be very toxic for example we go to a group of people and these people are so full of hatred and violence and despair and when the people with a lot of despair and hatred get together they create this collective energy of hatred and despair and it's terrible and we can feel when we get there that energy will enter us and enter our consciousness and it's very scary there there might be cities that or, or blocks in the city that have a lot of violence and a lot of hatred and we go there and we think that oh the houses there are very cheap to rent then our kids will receive the consequences because the people around there, they act and think in a very violent way and one or two years and that energy of violence and hatred will enter us, enter our kids. And that is a consciousness food, collective consciousness. Um, the mother of um, the philosopher Man Tau, Manchis, who's uh, a famous philosopher, one day he saw that there was a kid that was uh, coming home with a uh, bleeding nose from fighting kids in the village. And the mother of uh, 
Meng Da Yu, he, he, she knew that he just fought with the other kids in the village. And in this village, there's only slaughterhouses and the kids are not um, educated and do not go to school. So instead of uh, punish or yell at the, the, her kid, she thinks and she's trying to find ways to move away from this area. So she work, uh, she work extra hard at night to save up some money so she can move the family to a different village where it's cleaner and the kids are, um, they are more educated and have more peace. And from then on, Man Te Yu, he grew up to become a famous philosopher. So that's his story. So when we come to Blum Village, we see that the brothers and the sisters or the lay friends, each person is practicing mindfulness and trying to find ways to give rise to their compassion then we know that the collective energy is very healing and we are being nourished by this energy. So that is a good kind of consciousness food. So we have to choose what kind of environment that the collective energy, the collective consciousness is healthy, then we will stay there. But if you know city and a block there's too much violence and hatred when we're trying to find ways to leave that environment and find a different environment where people live in more ease and freedom and peace so we can benefit from these healthier uh, source of conscious food so these are the outside collective consciousness but our individual consciousness inside also has um, healthy elements and also toxic elements. So when we eat and if we think all over the place and scatter our minds, we might eat these, these non-nourishment consciousness food from within our consciousness arise. Or in our dreams, we think we dream of so many scary things and very dark and terrible things so in that dream, we are eating these elements, toxic elements of, of uh, consciousness from our subconsciousness. And according to the Buddha's teaching, in our subconscious, we have everything. We have the pure land, we have heaven, we have hell. It has hungry ghosts and hell and the ten realms within the realms of hungry ghosts it is within our consciousness the word of hell is within our consciousness if we do not practice diligently then then that food from the hell and from hungry ghosts will come up or that man adams one day he he became crazy and used the and use a gun to kill his mom and kill 20 other kids in school in Newtown. And we are, um, the, and the hell arise from within us and we eat this food from hell. Um, let me give a, um, let me just check on this. Okay. So when we eat in a way that hell, the food of hell arise like this, then we become hell, a person from hell. And all these qualities of um, love and compassion uh, disappear. So that's why we, we take up the gun and kill our mother and our teachers and our friends. Hell is not just outside. Hell is right within us. So that's why we have to be careful. We have to practice right view, right thinking, and practice um, mindfulness, so we can go into our sub, to, into our consciousness, and to not eat the toxic food, because the toxic food is right there in our consciousness. 
we might have these very sad experience where we suffer a lot in the past or we might uh, have been abused or been beaten or tortured or sexually abused in the past and these dark uh, sufferings affliction is still there in our consciousness and sometimes we have these dreams that arise and that we walk past these um, these old memories again. It's almost like we're eating the food from this time again. And our thinking is the same. And our thinking might pull up all these um, old memories to to chew again. Almost like those um, ruminant um, animals, like the cows, they have many kind of stomachs. So it chew the grass, it swallow, and then it regurgitate up and then it chew again so we are the same way we have all these um, afflictions and suffering and we receive into our consciousness and we regurgitate up and we chew it again so this kind of re-chewing that we do daily life while we eat or while we awake or sleep we are re-chewing these materials in our subconsciousness, we have all these movies about the past, these dark movies of these periods in, of suffering. And when we're free, we just go in there in that room and we just review those moments and relive those dark moments of the past. We, we are imprisoned by our past. In the dark prisons of the past there are some of these movies of these dark painful memories it might be from our ancestor our previous generations and sometimes when we're free we might uh, dream and we go into the the dark cellar in the, of the past and we watch those movies and we are ingesting these toxic consciousness so the Buddha taught us to practice a kind of attention like A is to put attention on something we only pay attention to something that help us open up a, a beautiful and bright sky Manaskara For example, when we hear uh, the sounds of the bell and we pay attention to the sounds of the bell then we stop our thinking and we focus on our breathing breathing in breathing out and we when we hear the sounds of the bell we have a chance to be in touch with our breath and our body and one breath in one breath out three times to calm down our body and our mind and calm down our feelings and sensations and we can live these moments of peace and freedom and joy and we focus paying attention to these good um, the good these good things to focus on so this is called newly that e it's called yoniso manaskara in pali which means to pay the right attention to, right attention. Yoniso Manaskara, or newly tak e in Vietnamese. So in a meditation center, they would arrange it in a way that the sounds of the bell, or the chant, or the curve, roof of the temple, or of 
a flower blooming. So there are these healing elements around so we can be in touch with inside. If we are a good architect, then we build a house or create a scenery that help people to see and to to hear something that they can be in touch with the healthy um, consciousness inside inside them. So that's called Yoniso Manaskara. Or sometimes if we hear the bell, and there are those who practice um, Yoniso Manaskara according to the bell, and they have these quiet moments to breathe. Some other people don't pay attention to the bell, and they just um, focus on their own sadness and suffering. So that is not right attention. We are more in touch with the negativity. And there's a lot of negativity in this world, such as when we watch TV, maybe we think, oh, I'm just watching a movie. But in the middle of the movie, every 10 to 15 minutes, there's a commercial. And those commercial, it stimulates the cravings inside of us. It says that if you buy this car, then your life will be upgraded. And if you buy this perfume or makeup, then people will uh, will come and you you attract other people as if they are flies. So these are the things that make you pay attention to the negative negativity. And these commercials are like that. And there are so many things like this in this world. So when we go grocery shopping, we have to equip ourselves with mindfulness. When we step into the store, this thing will pull our attention or that thing will pull our attention. We might not want to buy this thing, but the, they pull our attention. So right attention is something that will protect us. So we will not pay attention to this or that that can pull us so far away into this um, the realm of consumption that's not healthy for us. So those things are called phi nhu li tak ý or wrong attention. It's called a yoniso manaskara. So when we eat and not talk or not think or do walking meditation without talking or thinking, so this is paying attention to this fourth kind of food, the consciousness food. We sit and we think and our thoughts uh, focus into these topics that bring us into like to be in touch with the negativity inside, such as uh, these desires and cravings and hatred, ill will, despair, disappointment, and violence. And those things that we are in touch, those are the wrong um, attentions. So we live in a healthy environment. We have the chance to practice right attention very much. Um, so we need to build these practice centers where we can practice right attention easily. When we see a friend who is who is quiet or who's like being disappointed and being pulled by a thought and the face look kind of sad and suffering and we think that ah this person may be practicing wrong attention right now. It's being pulled by a painful feelings or bored feelings or some suffering that is, take, is taking over this person. So we come over and tap them on the shoulder and say, what are you thinking? Do you know that spring is coming? That the sunlight is very warm? So we bring this person outside of this consumptions of these unhealthy food. Do not let this friend 
sit there and re-chewing and re-chewing his pain and his um, suffering and these terrible memories. So when we eat with her friends, it's very easier. It's much easier because our Sangha help us in, in these moments, these situations so that we do not get consumed these unhealthy source of food. So now we can understand why when we eat, we do not scatter our mind and have these mental discourse or when we walk. We stop so we can be in touch with things that are very healthy and nourishing for us. In our consciousness, we have these 10 realms the realms of the Brahma heaven and the, the word of the devil Atula this is word of hell and then the word of hungry ghost and the word of animal beings so the, yes, the sixth path of rebirth. It's all there within us. Do not think that we are just just human. In inside there are angels within. Inside there are also animals within. Because sometimes we act like an animal. We eat like an animal. We play like an animal. And there's a lot of cravings. We, sometimes we also act like a hungry ghost. We hungry of love. We hungry of understanding. No one understand me. No one cares for me. So that's the hungry ghost within us. It's not somewhere outside. It's right here. And we are also people living in hell, because because hell is not down there, but it's right here in us. And most of us, we have, we have visited this hell. Isn't that true? We all know this experience, right? When we are in despair and having a lot of sad and sadness and suffering, we are in touch with hell right then. Do we want to come down there and play again? Do we want hell to come up again? So for that man, Adam's... Um, Hell has arisen for him. That's why he used a gun and killed the kids. Don't say that hell is somewhere else or heaven is somewhere else. It lies right here within us. Sometimes we act like an angel. Sometimes we act like a human. Or sometimes like the devil Atula. Atula is someone who has a lot of power. and a lot, But there's a very strong anger within. So... Within us, we have this quality of Atula. Sometimes we get so angry and sh shake. We shake ourselves. We shaky with with anger, and we want to destroy and break apart everything. And luckily, inside us, we also have the awakened ones. Tanvang is a a disciple of the stu of the Buddha. Even if you are a lay person, you also have this monastics within us. So if you see a nun, you feel moved and you want to become a nun. Or you want to see a monk, you feel moved and want to become a monk. So so those statues of baby monks, it's, they're sold out because everyone has a a nun or monk within them. So that is a direct student of the Buddha. It's called the word Tanvang. And within this, we also have 
these uh, self-awakened bitchy a pratyaka it's someone who has ability to sit by themselves and able to look deeply into the interbeing nature and become awakened so this is the one who is self-awakened within that we also have the bodhisattva with the great aspiration the great vow to practice and to transform themselves and to help others do not go find the bodhisattva somewhere else it's right here within us when we go into the main meditation hall we might not see we might not meet the bodhisattva even though there's so many statues on the altars but the real bodhisattva is right here within us and we need to give this bodhisattva a chance to grow within us and inside us we also have the buddha a baby monk within us we to go find the buddha the best way is to find us within because inside our consciousness we have the seeds of understanding the sprachna and the seed of love which is maha maitri maha karuna in here we have this baby buddha do not look for the baby buddha outside do not look for the baby buddha that's made of concrete outside in the garden so our consciousness is like it's like a tv set or a tv with cha 10 channels we press this channel then this channel appears if we press the channel of hell then hell appears so please please do not press that button of hell <laughs> do not press this button of um, hungry ghost or at atula because inside us we have the hungry ghost that we want to go everywhere aimlessly the poet Vu Hang Chung he has this poem that that express these uh, these hungry ghosts inside. All of us are are lost and we are forsaken by our hometown and we're hungry and this big this in this big vast oceans let this let this sailboat just sail away aimlessly without any direction this is the hungry ghost inside us in our group five seven of us that we are forsaken by our country and and in this vast ocean let this boat flow wherever it wants there is no direction So it all depends on us, depends on our practice of focusing our attentions that we would focus on uh, which area, which realm inside our consciousness. And when we press the hell channel, then that channel will appear and we become hell, hell right here and right now. And we press the button of Atula then this channel uh, appears and then we can become a hungry ghost right here or we press the button of the a monastic we become a monastic if we press the bodhisattva channel we become the bodhisattva and when one channel appears then all the other nine channels it will recede one realm arise and the other nine realms will recede away so we have to know to use our practice of right attention so that the channel the good channel will come up and do not let uh, do not let the other channel the uh, the bad channels these this chance to arise so in that way our consciousness is a source of food 
and we choose to nourish ourselves 